guys. I want to talk about tick-borne diseases today. We are seeing the creepy crawlies throughout the summer and fall, and even the winter. So talking about common misnomers and things that I think that you should know about tick-borne disease. So I think that ticks are going to take over the world. They carry more and more disease every year, and they're really hard to kill. The reason that tick-borne diseases are such a big deal is because they carry all kinds of nasty disease, everything from Lyme disease, anaplasma, Ehrlichia, uh, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Tick-borne disease can cause a whole host of illness, and there are thousands of tick-borne diseases out there. So what should you do if you find a tick on your pet? Basically, don't panic, okay? That is step number one. The chances of a tick actually transmitting tick-borne disease is actually pretty low. But what you wanna do is remove the tick as soon as possible. Most people think that in order for a tick to transmit tick-borne disease, it needs to be attached for at least 24 hours. So in order to remove a tick, there's a few different ways you can do it. They now make pretty cool gadgets where you can remove the tick. They look like little scoopers where you just scoop the tick up and pull it out of your pet's skin. The other way would be using a tweezer. If you're gonna use a tweezer, it's important to grab the tick as close to the base or the head as possible, as close to the skin as possible. And you wanna use firm, even traction. What you don't wanna do is squeeze the tick by the body because that can force more saliva or more disease producing parts into the pet. Now, once you remove the tick, you wanna just wash it with warm soapy water and monitor it. I do find that these areas can be pretty red for about one to two months, but you wanna watch it for any signs of infection, like any pus, any swelling or inflammation, any pain or discoloration. If you see any of that, then definitely get to your vet. Always better safe than sorry. Now I have people ask me, should I save the tick for testing? And that's not something that we really do. And that's because it's really what we call an academic exercise, meaning for your own knowledge. If we test a tick and we find that it has tick-borne disease, it doesn't necessarily mean that that tick will transmit disease to your pet or that they'll become truly infected. The other question I get asked is, should I test my pet for tick-borne disease? And the answer is pretty much no, not unless they're showing signs or symptoms of having tick-borne disease. Signs and symptoms of tick-borne disease include general lethargy, not eating, being febrile, uh, having what we call shifting leg lameness. So they might be lame or limping on one leg one day and then limping on another leg another day or even the next hour. That's pretty classic. But just overall ill well-being, not eating, not being themselves can be a sign of tick-borne disease. So the reason that we don't automatically test for tick-borne disease is twofold. First, it actually takes about four to six weeks for a tick-borne disease to seroconvert, meaning for us to see evidence of this in the bloodstream. Secondly, just because we see evidence of tick-borne disease in the bloodstream doesn't necessarily mean that the pet will become truly infected, meaning they may never get sick from this tick bite at all. I'm a big fan of using the monthly preventions to prevent flea and tick-borne disease because they carry a whole host of nasty effects. If you see any of the symptoms that we talked about, then always better safe than sorry, just get to your vet. Let them know that you saw a tick on your pet and they'll take the appropriate steps to assess whether or not your pet should be tested for tick-borne disease and give you the right treatment.